174th contact. Friday, August 20, 1982, 4.37 p.m. Quetzal says due to last Sunday's incident, I was absent until today, which is why I can first come today. I very well assessed, through my apparatus that is linked to the monitoring equipment, what happened so late at the night in the center. But I only became aware of this through the alarm, which was triggered by the monitoring equipment. But before I explain things to you, I would like to hear from you what findings you've made. Billy says as you wish it around 10.00 p.m. comma I went into my office, together with Ingrid, with whom I had a few things to discuss. A few minutes after entering the office, a strong surge light suddenly glistened through the window curtain very strongly, as if it was from a halogen lamp. Two or three seconds after that, I tore open the window in order to see who wanted to disturb us. But nobody was outside, which is why I left the office in a hurry and ran around the house to find the troublemaker. But there was no one to be found, which is why I then checked in the house and asked people whether any of them had been at the office window. But they all just sat in front of the television and regarded themselves as rotten hams. So I then went back into the office to talk about it with Ingrid. But after a few minutes a strong surge light flashed through the curtain again, so I quickly tore open the window again and jumped through it to the outside. This certainly lasted no longer than a second, for I was on the ball and waited for another possible same or similar incident. But despite my speed, nobody was in sight outside. This was strange because a second was far too short a time that someone could simply vanish in front of the office in that short amount of time. If anyone had shone at the office with a lamp through the curtain of the window then at least two to three seconds of time would have been necessary, in order to run along the house wall and disappear. So the whole thing seemed funny to me, which is why I searched half of the terrain of the center and, on another occasion, questioned the group members in the house, who still sat in front of the boob tube. So again nothing. So this went on for two more times, while it had become 11.11 p.m. in the meantime. And since these disturbances came to no end, sitting right next to the window, I now waited for another incident, which also actually appeared. While the light was flashing, I tore open the window, but nothing and no one could be seen outside around the entire house. But then, Ingrid announced herself behind my back, who said excitedly, Look, Billy, that is just like last night. So I just looked straight ahead, over the fence and into the void, where I logically wouldn't have looked, for who could stand there outside and also be able to shine a lamp into the office. But then, I saw it, and it wasn't a person with a lamp but rather a huge mass of iron eyes there that looked like a luminous fog in the light of the yard lamp. But peculiarly, there were strange movements that flowed from this ionization thing, out of which an enormous hand then emerged, which moved towards the fence and appeared as if it was searching for and reaching for something, but oddly enough, it avoided the direct light of the yard lamp towards the side and towards the top and at the same time, I realized that I was met with evil vibrations, which evoked that state in me that arises each time when I come within the range of fanatical sectarians or when I enter sectarian places, or as it was when I stayed with Margaret Flammer and Olgerilda for about two and a half hours in the monastery of Ain Zidelan, after which my vital functions slowly expired and I became cheese green in my whole body and had to be removed from the monastery by Olga and Margaret, for if the tremendous religious and sectarian forces in the convent had accumulated in me then I would have otherwise been killed because religions and sects develop these negative and destructive killing powers by the erroneous faith of the believers who then attack and kill all those who only live for the truth and who fight against the false doctrines of the religions and sects. And with this last incident in the office, when Ingrid made her remark, she referred to the fact that she had been sitting with me the night before on the sofa in front of the barn, when on the upper path in the rabbit enclosure, possibly someone from your federation materialized, who for 15 seconds was a bright green and was surrounded by a corona of blinding white light, from which a radiant red figure emerged, 
while all the air around ionized, and then there arose a strong smell of sulfur. This was about an hour after I had observed two other materializations, but which appeared red in color, near the shed during Ferdinand's night watch, but these weren't seen by Ferdinand, even though he sat on the bank beneath the pulpit and actually should have seen these things. In all other respects, the whole process of the ionization of air seemed to me such that these forces can't simply arise out of the air, but beneath the ground slope behind the trees, there probably must have been some ship, from which these forces were sent up to us. This impression was reinforced in me even more after I ran away, having recognized the structure from the window, left the office, and wanted to rush to the yard lamp behind the office. As I ran around the corner of the house, I saw that the ionizing structure paused suddenly and alarmingly in its climbing hand-over-hand -hand movements, in order to become a furiously rotating whirl within a split second, like what happens with water or with a sandstorm, whereby this rotating whirl created a compression in itself at breakneck speed and first rushed down and then backwards towards the forest, in order to flare up brightly there, high up in the branches of the trees and in order to disappear between the tree branches. Quetzal says your explanation and description of the incident are very exact, as these also come from my monitoring apparatus. In addition, I now tell you the following thanks to your control over yourself and your defensive powers, you or the group members haven't taken any damage. Even though it is puzzling to me as to how you were able to develop such enormous defensive powers within you, I think that it wasn't to be expected any differently with you. Billy says but what the devil was that thing? Quetzal says it was a product of the Giza intelligences, with whom we had not sufficiently considered their capabilities of consciousness with their deportation. Very well, we had them sent to a safe place, appearing in a very remote galaxy where they were completely isolated. But we didn't take into account that they were capable of creating as an entire block united in spirit telepathic form, a thought transmission factor of unlimited range. So they got together as an entire block, and somewhere in the universe, they found a human race of negative directives that gave them a response and which consults with the Giza intelligences using highly sophisticated spacecraft. With this space flying race that is still unknown to us until now, a dangerous conspiracy was forged, in order to make the Earth subject to the Giza intelligences once again. Moreover, the crucial factor here was that you and your group members and your helpers have already achieved a lot in all the world and now even have a very important educational film by the Americans, who intend to distribute this film throughout all countries of the world, which is why you and your group members should be switched off first in line. The fact that you have already booked rather large successes, which were first made possible and which were achieved to a large extent through the intrigues and negative machinations of the brothers H and K, has placed the largest thorn in the eye of the Giza intelligences and poses the largest threat to their desire for world domination that is of a religious sectarian form. So first, their greatest threat should be switched off and be destroyed which is why their first way led to you in the center, in order to begin their work of destruction there, which thoroughly failed, fortunately, through your great vigilance and your long-standing faculties and powers that are still incomprehensible and unfathomable to the earth people. But how the Giza intelligences and their new co-conspirators could build up the negative forces directed against you and concentrate them to such a terrible extent is, so far, inexplicable to us. Only the type of destructive power and its effects are known to us through our analysis, namely that from all of the terrestrial religious believers and sectarians, the forces of the negative crazy teachings were sucked off and became compressed together in a tremendous, destructive power block, which in its entire mass, exercises an inevitably deadly effect on all forms of life that live rightly and in accordance with the laws of creation, that are only concerned with the pure truth and its observance, and which are contrary to all that is connected with unreal religions and sectarianism. Thus, if a human life form was seized by the entire power of the negative power block then it would lead to the immediate insanity and death of that person. 
But if a person only enters into the weak fields of these negative forces of a sectarian religious form, then he doesn't have to fear death but only hopeless insanity, if I may only speak of one in relation to this. More mild concentrations of these negative forces would result if a person would be attacked by them such that he is instantly changed, without rescue in the sense that he suddenly denies all truth and the creation, as well as its laws and commandments, and becomes the fanatical sectarian, without any hope of being freed from it again in the present life. So all group members should make sure that if such phenomena appear, they should take to flight, even though these forces that might materialize somewhere can usually only last for a few seconds if they appear in weak forms and not as the entire block. We can offer some protection to the group members by and through the monitoring disc, by allowing protective vibrations to swing down over the area of the center via the disc. However, these are only effective if the group members aren't directly bareheaded and if they wear some protection against wide surface materials on or above the head, and the size of this protection must be at least 34.2 cm in diameter. Above this protection, the vibration released from our disc then divides itself like a fan to the ground, by what means a protective coat forms, which provides absolute protection. Otherwise still to be explained it is that in strong light or in daylight, such attacks aren't to be expected because just like the shady religions and sects prefer to spread their crazy teachings best and most successfully in dimly lit churches and temples and so on, these negative forces also shy away from the brightness, thus, they hold themselves back from it. Furthermore, it is still to be said that we brought an aircraft with Giza intelligences under our control, and we now have the fallible ones in safekeeping, which is foolproof and supervised. However, the aircraft of Giza's allies withdrew using a hyperleap procedure that isn't recognizable to us, so we also couldn't detect any structural vibrations, neither with the entry into hyperspace nor with the exit of the craft from the same. Nevertheless, we determined that within a diameter of 7 kilometers around the central point of the center, a negative force bell of the same kind was constructed, as it embodied that force which exerted a vicious attack against you, which fortunately failed, however. This negative force bell is constructed equally strongly on all sides, so there is no true center of a majority concentrated strength that can be investigated. As my analyses have shown, this energy bell is a force of energy phenomenon that is transmitted from somewhere, but we cannot identify where the true origin is and where lies the transmission channel of the materialized energy bell. With certainty, we could only determine that this transmission channel must be located at least over 5.5 light years from the Earth because within this distance range, there are found in the free space the smallest particles of these forms that are inexplicably produced by this great power. This is our current knowledge, and in accordance with this, we also pursue in the aforesaid distance range, our extensive analyses and researches for the source of the transmitter. Billy says so that would be about in the area of Centaurus, right? Quetzal says that is correct but it could be in the opposite end of the radius there or anywhere else within this great distance. Billy says you will certainly find the transmitter, the only question is how long this will take. In the meantime, there is just the constant threat posed by the force bell, right? Quetzal says that is correct, and finding the transmission channel is truly just a matter of time. But this is to be our sole concern, which is why we have also equipped a little more than 11,30s missile units with the most modern analyzers and sensors and so on for this task. Billy says a proud armada, man oh man. Quetzal says the cosmos is characterized by its enormous size, which is why the 11,30s units that were dispersed, as they now work in the ring area, don't even seem like a tiny speck of dust. Billy says I wasn't even thinking about that but rather if they would be seen flying over a planet in a heap. Quetzal says that's something else, I misunderstood you. Billy says it would be something like a gigantic spectacle. Quetzal says that would be so, that is correct, 
but now, we must finish our conversation because with the accumulating new work, I am even more pressed for time. Until we meet again, my friend, and don't worry because we will steer things back to their normal course. Billy says bye, and many thanks to you for everything even to all the others. Also greet for me and thanks all those who work for us Earthlings in the 11,30s spaceships. Quetzal says everyone will be very happy about your greetings, but now, until we meet again. Billy says bye. The end. <laughs>